Alright, welcome back to another episode of Utena Shadow Girls Explained. In this episode, we'll be recapping the major events of Episode 3 on the Night of the Ball and the rough message of the Shadow Girls. This episode begins with Utena being introduced to Toga, the student council president. To her surprise, she finds out that Toga also has a rose seal, one of the rings he wears on his finger, and wonders whether or not he was the prince from her childhood, especially considering his diametrically opposed playboy persona. Later on, as Utena continues to ponder this possibility, we jump to Anthe, being ridiculed for her quote-unquote involvement for putting Seonji in a bad mood. As a result, three girls physically and mentally abuse her until Nanami breaks up the scuffle and initiates a conversation with Anthe, who we later find out is Toga's sister. In their conversation, Nanami enlightens Anthe to the fact that she's popular among the boys, particularly the freshmen, and has been nominated for the school dance queen. She also mentions that she's been quite interested in meeting Anthe and wants to get to know her better. Of course, Nanami's cryptic smile assertiveness in wanting to get to know Anthe, and insistence on going to the ball reeks of a clever subterfuge on Nanami's part. But none the wiser, and with the reassurance of Utena, she decides to attend the ball after all. Then, our faithful shadow girls show up to reveal another riddle. Do you know? Do you know? Have you heard the news? Oh dear girl, what do you know? The upcoming ball is the talk of the town! One, two, three, one, two, three. They may call it a ball, but it's really just a tram. It has all the girls in an uproar. One, two, three, one, two, three. How shameless can they be? This riddle seems simple on the surface, yet we must peel it back to reveal its numerous layers. The Shadow Girls are kind enough to declare that the ball is a trap, and we clearly see this later in the episode when the waiter mistakenly sprays Anthe with champagne, causing her dress to dissolve slash disintegrate, resulting in profound embarrassment, which is exactly what Nanami was intending to accomplish, hence how shameless can they be. But besides this overt message, we must also notice that one of the Shadow Girls has a dog on a leash. This could be a multifaceted message with more than one meaning. Notice that the girl on the right who is holding the dog is also the girl wearing the prince outfit and holding the sword when the Shadow Girls dance, indicating that this girl represents Utena and how she will protect Anthe, the school dance queen, from the bitches, i.e. the female quote-unquote dogs, or Nanami's friends who attempted to embarrass her, who Utena has under her control when she decides to step in and save the day, hence the leash that she's holding the dog with. Also notice that she starts with one dog, then when the girls are dancing she has two dogs on a leash, then back to one again as they are talking, and then back to two as they dance one more time. The old expression, one is the loneliest number, could ring true here as Utena and Anthe are shown to be out of their element when separated from one another at the ball. Anthe feels uncomfortable with the glaring eyes of the student body on her as she stands in the middle of the dance area wondering what she should do. And Utena's displeasure with Toga's advances are quite obvious, leaving her in a bind as well. But when the two are together, with Utena in her normal apparel, everything is as easy as 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, A, B, C. Another observation that one could make is that the shadow girl on the left, i.e. Anthe, has nothing visible in her basket, while the shadow girl representing Utena has what looks like a bag of flowers. This could signify that Anthe will eventually lose her dress due to the prank coordinated by Nanami, and Utena will be wearing a dress with a flower on it before she saves the day. And one last thought. Notice that while Utena is wearing her boy's uniform during the dance with Anthe and the shadow girl representing her is in a prince's outfit, the shadow girl also has a sword attached to her hip. This is the first episode in which there was no rose battle for the Rose Bride. However, it was a duel in a way, in which Utena circumvented the defective dress with an even better one to steal the spotlight and obstruct Nanami's dastardly plans. Remember, even though Nanami isn't a member of the student council, 
or a recipient of the end of the world letters, she was still shown with a spinning rose when she made her initial appearance, indicating that she will have a crucial role to play going forward, and will eventually engage with Utena in a face-to-face -face battle, rather than an indirect battle at the ball. But this will all unfold over the subsequent episodes. In the meantime, if you have any questions about my analysis, or Utena in general, you can leave it in the comments. Or if you have any of your own theories, you can share them in the comments as well. I'm always open to different perspectives. In any case, we will move on to episode 4, the Sunlit Garden Prelude, in our next episode of the series. And if you can't wait until my next episode review, check out one of my previous episode reviews to catch up on everything Utena related. But until next time, catch you on the flip side!